This video is picking up right where the previous video left off, and we're moving from for loops to while loops, and we're still in the part 070 loops document. All the code that I'm going to show you is going to work perfectly in Octave the same way as I'm showing it work in MATLAB, unless I happen to use the table function, which will be a very minor addition, and I will note it when I get to it, hopefully, if I remember. All right, for loops are very convenient and commonly used, but there is another kind of loop, the while loop, and the while loop is actually more general than the for loop. Anything that the for loop can do, the while loop can also do. Not necessarily do better, but can also do. Now you might ask, okay, so then why bother having for loops at all? Well, because they are more convenient, and we'll see a direct comparison of that uh, in the future in this video. Control enter. All right, so a very basic while loop that does not do anything interesting. I start with a variable, set it equal to zero, not a vector, just a variable. And then while that variable is less than three, we're going to increase it by one and display it out. So the advantage of a while loop is that it will repeat as long as something is true. A for loop, you give it a vector or a matrix, and it repeats for however many columns there are in that vector or matrix. You know at the beginning how many times your loop is going to repeat. But what if you're in a situation where you don't know how many times your loop needs to repeat? For that purpose, you need while loops. Another thing that I want you to recognize is that this syntax, this setup, is very similar to an if statement. I ran this code and the loop repeated three times because at that point this condition became false. But if I just replace the word while with the word if, it still runs. It runs differently. It only runs once because this is true and that's how an if statement do. But the syntax is so very similar and I want you to recognize that. So I'm gonna put it back as a while loop and then move on down. And I'm immediately moving into a big complicated example. Don't worry, there will be simpler while loop examples in this video. So here I want to show you an example of something that you cannot do with a for loop. So this example is going to display the hailstone sequence for whatever number the user types in. The hailstone sequence is connected to something called the Colatz conjecture. There was a mathematician named Colatz who said, hey fellow mathematicians, I think that if you give me any positive whole number and then I run this procedure on it, I will eventually get back to one. And the procedure is this. If the number is even, divide it by two, and then make that your new number that you're going to continue to operate the procedure on. Otherwise, if your number is odd, take the number and multiply it by three and add one, and that's our new number, and then we'll repeat the procedure on that. So I say, while the number is not equal to one, this is the same as saying until x equals one, but we don't have an until command. That just doesn't exist in MATLAB or in most programming languages. So it's the, it'd be the same thing though, right? So while x is not equal to one, repeat this code right here. And here's the thing. Nobody has ever proven that this works for all positive integers. Now we've tested it like empirically by running code on numbers up into the billions or more, but nobody's proved it mathematically. So it's an unsolved problem. Now, if you did prove it, you might be able to translate that proof into a for loop. But since we haven't, basically, if you give me a number, I can't tell you how many times we're going to have to repeat this procedure to get back to one, if it's even possible at all, without actually running this procedure, this loop. All right, so anyway, let's run it. Control enter. Enter a positive integer. Let's start with three. All right, three's odd. Multiply it by three and add one. Ten's even. Divide it by two. That's odd. Multiply it by three and add one. Great. Well, this is a power of two. So we divide it by two, divide it by two, divide it by two, get down to one and then we're finished. Now, if we plug in five, well then basically we'll just see this sequence right here. The length of the sequence is hard to predict without actually just doing the calculation. So that's another way of saying, we don't know how many times we need to repeat. So if that's the case, that's where you gotta use a while loop. All right, continuing on down. While loops are stubborn, is what I like to say. So in this example, we're gonna run it and it's going to simulate uh, a child who is bored on a car trip. So are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No, 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 no. When am I gonna say yes? Am I ever gonna say yes? Am I just gonna start mashing my keyboard, accidentally hit the uh, caps lock key? Who knows? A while loop is perfect for this situation. Eventually I say yes, and then we're done. Here's the way I did that. Well, I asked for user input, put the result into a variable named arrived. I said while arrived does not equal yes, 
I don't know why I used the double quotation marks. I could have used the single. Then I'm going to repeat the code that basically just asks, are we there yet again, and replaces the variable value. Now, once I eventually do say yes, then this condition will be false, and then we'll move on to displaying great, I'm bored. Note, Octave users, this won't work for you. But good news, Octave users, you can instead do uh, this right here. You can say while not string compare arrived and yes, and then it will work. Now, I believe this also works in MATLAB, but I thought the other one was easier to read. So let's see here. Yeah, so this still also works in MATLAB. Um, so this is the more general code, but I felt like this was easy to read. But maybe you disagree. I don't know. It's uh, up to you. All right, continuing on down. So in a previous video, we had an example with if statements where I used an if to check if a number was valid for plugging into natural log. So we need a positive number to take the natural log of it. But now I have a while loop that's going to force the user to repeat themselves until they enter a positive number. So if I refuse to enter a positive number, good news. The while loop is stubborn and it just keeps asking me over and over and over again until I enter that positive number and then it takes the natural log of it. So while loops are also good for sort of protecting your code from bad input. For loops are counting loops. I said this before and I'll say it again. For loops are for when you know how many times you're going to repeat, or you can tell based on the length of a vector or a matrix. While loops are when you don't know. Now there may be some shortcut to this calculation, but if there is, I don't know what it is. What I'm going to do with this code right here is I'm going to repeat until a value in the Fibonacci sequence is greater than some input value. Now I said until, which usually means while the opposite of what I just said. So until a value b is greater than value, that means while b is less than value or less than or equal to, we're going to repeat here. Fibonacci sequence, just a quick reminder, is where you take two numbers, you add them together, you get another number, you take that number and one of the previous numbers, add those. Anyway, let me, let me run it, it'll be easier to describe. Okay, so let's see how long it takes the Fibonacci sequence to get over 100. Okay, it takes 12 iterations. So the first two Fibonacci numbers, if we start with one, we add those together, we get two, and then two plus one is three, and then two plus three is five, and then three plus five is eight. That's how you do a Fibonacci sequence. And the way I did that in the code is, well, I start with two variables, a and b, both set them equal to one, display them out right here. I'm gonna count how many total Fibonacci numbers I've used or, or accessed, and I've already done two, so we're gonna start that off at two. I'm gonna ask the user for their input, and then while that second Fibonacci number is less than or equal to value, I'm gonna keep calculating new Fibonacci sequence numbers and I'm going to display them out. And I'm also going to increase the count so I remember how many Fibonacci values I've looked at. Now, an important aspect to this code right here, and I want you to focus on these three lines that I've not commented out, is how we calculate that new Fibonacci number. You actually need a third variable. You might think, oh, well, I mean, the new A value is just B, and the new B value is just A plus B, so that's all I need. This actually doesn't work. And the problem is that by setting A equal to B, we've replaced and obliterated the previous value of a. So this is no longer correct. And you might think, oh, okay, we'll just do it in the opposite order. But then you just have the opposite problem. If we do b equals a plus b, we've obliterated, we've replaced that previous value of b, so now this is incorrect. Huh. So all we need is just a backup copy. So I named this variable old b value, and I set it equal to b, so now I've got a backup, a copy. And so then when I update b, I can still set a equal to that previous value. And I'm basically pointing two fingers at my two current values and then just like moving the two fingers forward along the sequence to keep getting the next value. But you do need that extra variable. And I think sometimes that throws people off. Continuing on down. For loops can always be translated into while loops. Now the opposite is not always true. We saw the example earlier with the hailstone sequence. It's usually not that useful or profitable to translate from for loops into while loops, but I think it's a really good exercise to demonstrate an understanding of the for loops and the while loops. So I make my students do it, and so I'm going to demonstrate how to do it here. So I've got an exact copy of some code from earlier in, oh, not this video, but the previous video. So in this document, part 70, I've already got this code. 
and I just sum up the values in this vector here. All right, and there's the sum right there, 414. And I'm going to translate this code into a while loop. Now, I'm not sure if I can fit it all on the screen at the same time. It looks like I cannot. I'm going to briefly change the font size to make sure I can fit both on the screen. Okay, so I've got my for loop code up here, and I've got my while loop code down here. And I've annotated the changes that I made. For the while loop, I need an additional variable. I basically need an index to determine what position am I at in this vector so that I can loop through it in order. The for loop kind of provides that for me. That's why the for loop is more convenient, but the while loop is ultimately more flexible. So I've got this index variable. I added that in. Now I say I deleted this line and added this line, but really that's just the replacement, right? I replaced the for line with the while line. Note the condition though while the index is less than or equal to the length of my vector named values. This line was changed slightly. Instead of total equals total plus value, I have total equals total plus values at position index. That's how the while is going to get access to whichever specific value it's currently at in the loop. And finally, I need to increase my index by one to move forward through the values in my vector. Let's see another example of that. Scrolling. Actually, I haven't even run this second one, but I get the exact same result. You can't even tell that I reran it. There it is. And let's continue on down. Here's another for loop from earlier in this document from the previous video. It's going to count up and also access the values that are greater than the average plus 20. And so there's a vector of those values and a vector again. And then the corresponding while loop. Yeah, I'm not easily going to fit these both on the screen. So let me zoom back in and then we'll examine the code here. So again, for the translation into a while loop, I've added this index variable. You could name the variable whatever you want. I just think index is a good name. I'm starting it off at the first position because that's how much I'm looping through the vector from the beginning through to the length of the vector. And that's what my while loop says. While the index is less than or equal to the length of the vector, do the exact same code as before, but don't forget to increase that index by one to move forward to the next value and then the next and then the next. And I can run this code and I will get the same results. And there they are right there. Continuing on down. A problem that it's easy to run into with while loops is the infinite loop. So here I've written some fairly dumb code. I set x equal to 0 and then I say while x is less than 10. Well, that's true. So my loop will run at least once. But then I just decrease x. I'm getting further away from 10, not closer. Huh, what happens when I run this? Control Enter. Well, it just displays out increasingly negative numbers forever, maybe. I mean, maybe it stops at some point. I don't know. The way to fix this is to click on the command window. Notice the blue bar at the top. When I click on the command window, the blue bar is now over here. And then hold control and tap C. I like to tap it a couple times just to show MATLAB that I'm serious. This works in Octave as well, but I found it to be a little bit more finicky. I found it seemed to me that I had to click down toward the bottom, toward the prompt. But in any case, you know, hold Control, tap C a whole bunch. It tells MATLAB to stop running the currently running code. And that works in a lot of different situations. So if you ever get really stuck, one of the first things to try, click over here and hold Control and tap C. Now I'm going to talk more about while loops in the next section. I'm going to talk about showing nested for loops and some other things, but that is going to be the end for this video. And uh, yeah, I will see you next time.